Hello and welcome! In this tutorial we are going to go back to our good old favorite, the human reaction time circuit. And we're going to blend it together with this, the DFRobot micro SD card reader with a micro SD card. I've actually got a huge one, 16 gig, basically about a million times more memory than I need. Nonetheless, it's the one I happen to have. They work very simply. You click it in and you plug it into the blue end of the gravity shield. If you plug it in right, the lights go on, which it's really hard to plug it in wrong, to be honest. Bingo. Lights on, that's that. Program. Well, right here we have our um, reaction time circuit. I have moved the buzzer into pin 10 it seemed to be making weird sounds in pin 12 we will also try to do it without the buzzer at first with just the light and you're wondering how we're gonna have the code which reads into the sd card well it both is really simple and it isn't we're gonna use a standard data logger program from arduino ccen tutorial data logger and what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this code and I'm going to run it just so you see what it does. After I run it, we're going to edit and merge it with the reaction time game. So basically right here, we have um, the serial begins. Uh, it does all sorts of things initializing card card initialize it checks that the card is there that the card actually is working recognized ready to write on then it basically goes from analog pin zero to analog pin one and two so it takes three analog pins a0 a1 a2 and reads the analog sensors and then it adds them to this data string and when it gets down to the from three to one, when it gets down to one, it adds a comma and a new line. So this data string, this is sort of the key bit and we can get rid of the rest of the loop and we can start to introduce this. But after I've uploaded it, what, um, what you're going to see is exactly what's going to be in the data file. We're gonna look into the data file in the next video. But in this one, our goal is going to be to like have 20 readings of reaction time. And then in the next one, we're going to open it up in a text file, paste it into Word and graph it. So, um, you're gonna, yep, that's it. So you can remove the auto scroll and you can see that right at the start, it said initializing as the card card initialized. So that's all pretty, pretty good. So right now we need to take this game and I guess we can start with the variables. We're going to skip, we're going to skip out on the buzzer for now. LEDs in number nine. I guess button input, LED output. <whistles> right before the serial begin, control T should handle that. And here we are in the loop. Um, this, the data string is the most important component. This is the only thing we're going to keep. And we can delete all this. I suppose I can make a comment and just say our edit begins here. And our edit ends here. So we're going to basically transplant our program into that area and of course we're going to be playing with it a bit so for the interest of time we're going to maybe wait between two and five seconds make it a bit faster um led high that's good buzzer is out 
buzzer is out, LED low, your time was. Now, we can leave this in, but I would much, I would much rather, because what this does is it actually serial prints the data string once it's been written. And this will be interesting to see how long it takes to write the information in. The previous file was called data log. We can call this reaction result. So I imagine what would happen is that we're going to press that button and instead of having an instant serial reading, we're going to have it like, a, I don't know, quarter of a second later when the thing writes. So let's see. I'm, I'm of the opinion that we could probably get rid of all of that. So the counter is going to go to zero. Before the counter goes to zero, we are going to be adding to the data string. The first thing we're going to add to the data string plus equals to that's like data string equals data string plus plus equals to the first thing we're going to add is going to be the counter. And we're going to of course convert counter to string. And the next thing we're going to add is a comma so when we print the data string here see how a data file print lines it should sort of save it in a separate line so it should be a um, a result comma result comma result comma I'm not even sure that the commas are absolutely necessary but I'm going to use them anyway. So let's see. Let's have a look at the way this displays. Um, I really think we're good to go. LED high. Check here. We could have, aha. Uh -huh. So if we get that card initialized, then the start is going to be a big deal. That's good. So here we are, button circuit. Oh, that was pretty slow. And aha. Interesting. It's expecting data log text because I changed the name, right? File right. Let's try this again. Oh, yes. Eighteen. And if you do false presses, it, it, it sort of reads it as zero. And zeros we have to ignore. So that works and it works great. And it takes a little while to write to the SD card. Now, what I want to do is take exactly 
20 readings. Um, and what one thing that I'm thinking is when this sort of starts, when our game starts, it, it should have a, the data string should write this, the game starts here. So we, sh we should write something like this. Plus equals to. So the data string should say that, and then we ought to do this little thing. Twenty times. Let's try ten. I have a feeling that what's going to happen is that it's going to print out all the results as soon as we're done, which could work, which could work. So let's run it this way. Um, for a loop or while loop. Now we'll do it a for loop for int. I equals to zero. I less than five. I plus plus. Begins, ends, begins, ends. So we're going to run it five times. And then the printing of the data string is going to happen after we do this whole game five times. Should be interesting. Good. So you expect to play it five times and then there's going to be a printout of five results. And we can introduce a result inside here and then follow it up with a printout as well. I think it's coming. Game starts here. 22, 19... 19, 19, 22, 19. That's nice. 22, 19. Yeah, that's really good. Um, if data file, because they're comma delineated, I don't even think I need the game. Game starts here, right? I can just serial.print ln game starts next I can say I want 10 results and every time um, we exit this while loop we can serial dot print ln counter and then it's going to print out all the 10 results and those 10 are then going to be saved on the SD card in fact I'm going to have two runs of 10 and in the next video we're going to go into the SD card have a look at the data log and you are going to see exactly those two results so Let's do this one time. So we're going to play two games. Game starts. We're ready. 18. That was bad. 
19, good. 18. Aha, there you go. That is the printout, and that's what we're gonna see in the next game. Oops, I think we're gonna we just maybe cause a zero. No, let's go. Let's go. That's my best time. Wow, backed up twice. I suppose practice makes perfect 16. I've never done that well with light. 18, wow. Oof. So there you have it. This and that should be saved on the SD card. And this, this kind of shows you that what you can have is serial monitoring going on and, and printing your own statements, whereas only, only what you add to this data string gets written into the SD card. So what you can have is save the crucial information while printing all kinds of other information to help the user play the game. So that is all for this video. In the next video, we're going to check out the data, then we're going to plot it in Excel. And after that, we're going to conduct a real investigation into sound versus light. And which of these two do humans, at least this human in this chair right here, react faster to? Okay, see you in the next tutorial.